Well, I'm sure you've heard of the phrase, standing out from the crowd. What's really interesting is that phenomenon, I believe, is actually true for playing cards. And I don't know if you happen to have a favorite playing card, and more importantly, I suppose, do you happen to know what are the two most popular playing cards that people supposedly randomly give? Okay. Well, that's what we're going to look at today. And one of the reasons I think people choose one of these two cards is that their intrinsic ability to stand out in any crowd in which they find themselves. Okay, so as you can see here, I have a good selection of cards of different value suits and colors. I believe there's 16 of them. So let's go ahead and gather these. Now, since we uh, both saw the cards, uh, why don't we randomize them with um, input from you. How would you like these piles stacked? Left on right or right on left? Okay. Uh, we can deal into four piles if you would like. Uh, we can do stacking from left to right, right to left. We can even do something called a leapfrog stacking. You want them stacked from left to right, no leapfrog. Okay, that's fine. Should we do one more of those? Okay, that's fine. Would you like to see the leap frog stacking? It's kind of a fun one. You would, from right to left? Okay, so this is how it works. This one leaps over its neighbor, lands there. This one leaps over its neighbor, lands there. How would you like these stacked? It's a free choice. Left on right? Okay. Very good. Uh, we can even deal out into eight piles, which is kind of crazy here. Now, would you like to stack the top row on top of the bottom or the bottom on top of the top? Your choice. Bottom on top. Okay, very good. How would you like these stacked? Left to right, right to left, or even leapfrog? Left to right, leapfrog. Okay, very good. We'll do that. And then how would you like these stacked? Right on left? Okay, well, I'm hoping that you realize that these cards are mixed beyond the knowledge of any human, and even a computer tracking these cards is going to have to do quite a bit of work to know where anything is at this point. Why don't we do one kind of uh, final kind of mixing that I'm not sure if I've actually done on my channel before, where I divide a packet into two halves, and then each half we perform the famous Australian down under. Okay, so let me show you how that works. So down, under, down, under, down, under, down, under, down, under, down, under, down. Last one goes on top. Okay, and we do the same thing for this one. Down, under, down, under, down, under, down. Last one on top. Uh, how would you like these stacks? Right on left? Okay, very good. Well, why don't we, uh, we could mix more, and I, I need you to realize that. The structure that we're working with here is called a quasi Bessie sequence of order 16. And if you are aware of that kind of packet structure and have looked at some of the videos on my channel, you'll know that you can mix this packet in hundreds of different ways and not harm it, okay? Uh, but I don't want to <laughs> spend any more time mixing and, and run the risk of you falling asleep, okay? So what I thought we would do is just uh, perform a Klondike shuffle, since we haven't done that yet. This is where you take the top and bottom off is one, kind of a fun shuffle. And then we're going to uh, deal out into a triangle. Okay, but kind of in a fun way, I'm going to put out pairs. Now, normally you would just put one card at a time, uh, but here I'm putting out pairs, and then we'll just kind of stack them in opposite order to kind of really mix these. And then at this point, we're essentially done. I'm going to deal out uh, eight cards, see, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then the second pile will be left as a second pile. Okay, now we're at the end here, 
and I'm hoping that this confirms something that I hinted at at the beginning. Namely, there are two very popular cards, in fact the most popular cards for people to randomly choose, and they seem to stand out in any crowd in which they're placed. And I think it's one of the reasons that these are popular. So what are those cards I have in mind? Well, you might guess it's the Ace of Spades, and the other one is the Queen of Hearts. And so those are the two top choices for people to identify supposedly as a random card that comes to mind. Well, let's see if our little experiment together confirms why that should be the case. Is it actually true that the Queen of Hearts and the Ace of Spades stand out in any crowd in which you find them. Well, I don't know about you, but I would say there's quite a bit of evidence of something going on here. We have seven black cards with a queen right here at the bottom. And then we have seven red cards with an ace of spades at the top. How in the world did you do that making this perfect series of choices that led to a confirmation of something that I have just always seen to be true. Because think about it, if you had made different choices along the way relative to the mixing of these cards, the outcome almost certainly would have been different. Okay, very good. Well, uh, this is an example of quasi Bessie sequences of order 16. Um, now, let me point out something that is just serendipity. Okay, so when you go to do this, uh, just realize that the Ace of Hearts here just happened <laughs> to be the bottom card after the process that we put it through. So this Ace of Hearts, depending on the choices made and all of the mixing that we did, it could have been here. It could have been over ah, could have been over here, it could have been the top, it could have been third from the top, it could have been anywhere in here. The same thing for the ace of spades. In fact, I've never seen it turn out this way, where one's on top and one's on bottom. Um, so when you go to do this, the ace of spades could be anywhere in here, depending on like if left pile stacked on top of right and all of those choices that we gave the spectator. Okay, so very quickly. Um, so to do this, what, all you need to do, in fact, these are the two halves we're going to work with. We're going to have the ace of spades mixed in with the red and then the queen of hearts mixed in with the black. In fact, right now we have the ace third from the bottom, here queen third from the top. I don't know, that just looks ridiculously suspicious, so let's just move the queen there. <laughs> it doesn't matter where she goes there. Okay, same thing with the ace. Okay, so this is what I did, sorry, this is what I did to set up the packet. Okay, so you didn't see this. I had already done this kind of pre-recording. So what you do is you just randomly stack these two halves Okay. Oh, and then in the language of Bessie sequences and quasi Bessie sequences, let me just point out that, for example, we're considering all of the red cards as ones, including the ace of spades, and then all of the black cards as, quote, zeros, including the queen of hearts. So when we go to build our sequence, I'll just show you a little write up here of 1001010110110101. The ones that I've just pointed out would be any of the cards in this first half here where the ace of spades is being thrown in with the red. So it's considered a one as well. And then the zeros are any of these, okay? Now there's a really slick way to put them into this organization that I'm going to show you. So you just have the two halves, uh, that are associated with either like ones, so I have eight quote ones, eight quote zeros, okay? So how do I get it into this organization here, okay? Well, there's a really slick way of doing that, thanks to Warner Miller, one of my, my subscribers. Okay, so this is what you need to do. It's, it's simple to do. We're going to deal out into a triangle. You've seen this before for, for Bessie sequences of order eight, but this time we're going to deal out pairs. So you just deal out pairs into this triangle configuration. 
Okay, so this is all pre-setup stuff. You pick up the first pile that was like created, you pick up that one first, but stack in opposite order. So it's counterclockwise now. And then you just perform a mange over under or an under over. Either one works just fine. And then we will have it in this special arrangement. And once it's in this special quasi Bessy sequence of order 16 arrangement, then you can mix this in so many different ways and it won't harm it. So I don't know how deep we should go here, but so remember we're counting the reds, the red cards, along with the ace of spades as a one. So just notice I have a red, so I have one there. Skip the zeros. I have the ace of spades, which we've thrown in with the red, so we're counting it as a one. Um, I have a, a black, which is a zero. I have two reds, one, one, then a black, zero. Now remember, we're counting the queen as a member of the group of black cards. So it's, quote, a zero. And then we have a red 10, red 4, 1, 1. And then we have a black ace, 0. And then we have a red jack, 1. Two black cards, 0, 0. And then a red card, 1. So this is a Bessie sequence of order 16 relative to those two groupings in which we've tossed the ace of spades in with seven red cards and the, and the queen of hearts into a group of seven black cards. Okay, so now this packet, and so what I did at the beginning, as I started the video, I had this spread out for you to see. And I just kind of showed you, you know, no one's really going to see any structure here. They really aren't. So it's going to look like a random mess. But even if it were in some order, which it is, uh, we went through all of that mixing. We dealt into two piles. We dealt into four piles with stacking from left to right, right to left, or leapfrog. I, uh, stack, I dealt out into eight piles, and then we randomly stacked the bottom on top of the top, or the top on top of the bottom, and then we even did a left to right leapfrog stacking, and so forth. Uh, you can do a pharaoh shuffle, you can do a pairwise transpose, you can do an even or odd up jog. Those are all mixes, mixing that we didn't do. You, you could, okay? And then what I did was, do you remember I dealt the cards into two piles, like this, two piles of eight cards, and then independently I performed a down under for each. Well, what that does is it inverts each of those sequences, those packets, so that when you randomly stack those, you're back to a quasi Bessie sequence of order 16. And in other words, you haven't heard anything. None of that mixing has changed the fact that the structure that we started with is still there. And since it has a known structure, we can take advantage of that at the very end. Okay, And the way that we take advantage of it at the very end, we, we reverse the process that got the cards into a quasi Bessie sequence of order 16. And so for those who have studied principles on my channel, you'll know that the inverse of the Mange shuffle is the Klondike. Okay, so to get it into this special quasi Bessie sequence of order 16 at the beginning, we did a triangle deal, remember that, with pairs, and then I performed a Mange shuffle, over, under, or under, over. Well, to reverse that, you just have to do the opposite of the Mange first, which is a Klondike, I did a Klondike shuffle, and then after the Klondike shuffle, you can go ahead and do the triangle dealing where you, you put out a two, 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 and you just keep repeating that until you run out of cards. And then you always pick up this one first, then this one, then this one, okay? And so technically what this would do is it would bring back the packet so that the top half are all red cards, let's say, with the Ace of Spades mixed in, and the bottom cards are all black cards with the Queen of Hearts mixed in somewhere. Well, if that's true, that there's essentially red on top, black on bottom, that means you can just deal out the top half, 
four, five, six, seven, eight. So these would be like all red with the ace of spades in there somewhere. And then these would be all black with the queen of hearts in there somewhere. Okay, and then you can reveal that and just, you know, point out that, boy, we have just confirmed why these two cards are so special because they just seem to stand out in any crowd in which they find themselves. So anyway, that's the kind of secret to the effect. But I will include links in the description below to quasi Bessie sequences as well as Bessie sequences themselves. So and and I have many, many applications and examples of using these powerful packet structures. And they're powerful for the simple reason that they are unharmed by virtually all of the systematic mixing procedures we use today. Okay, And there's really no other packet structures out there that are unharmed by all of that mixing. Okay, So a Bessie sequence has a higher degree of protection against that kind of mixing. But a quasi Bessie sequence like we used here is close behind and it will also be unharmed by many of the common systematic shuffles we use today. So anyway, take a look at that playlist so you can learn more about these things. And once you understand them, you can create your own amazing mathematical card effects. So thank you for watching and take a look at other videos on my channel.